WCLN 1170 Radio and Star Communications Channel 16 proudly present The We Should Know Show, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative. Now, here's your host, J.W. Simmons, as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We Should Know is on the air. I want to thank you for being with us today. My name is J.W. Simmons, your host. Each and every week on Tuesdays, we come to you on Star Communications TV, Channel 16. We're also simulcast on WCLN Radio. I'm glad you're here today. think you're going to not only enjoy this conversation, I want to go ahead up front and tell you to please call a friend. Stay tuned because we're going today talk to people about something that is possibly right at your back door you haven't thought about, but folks been working for years to make this thing a possibility for you. And it's called the Great Kahari or Little Kahari, and it's the rivers that's near you. And we're talking with Philip Bale and Cullen Bale. Philip, you've been doing this a long time. I want to start with you this morning. <clears throat> this this passion you have uh, for opening the waterway, for looking at what the possibilities are from an educational perspective, as well as uh, this aspect of just mental health uh, on the on the rivers and tributaries here in Sampson and surrounding counties, um, the legacy you have as as part of the Kahari Nation, the legacy of the tribe. This is something that is important. Talk to us about that and kind of introduce to us uh, the magnitude of what you've got been involved in. Well, thank you, JW. Uh, for me, I, to just talk about the river itself is, uh, is something that I could do all day. And it's because that's where I was born and raised. I was raised right up the road here about six miles on the Big Kahari River across from the, uh, the Indian Center there, the East Carolina uh, Indian High School. And uh, that's on the Big Kahari River. And uh, that section was special to us because growing up as a young boy, we didn't have the opportunity to uh, go to swimming pools and to go fishing down in large lakes and mm -hmm. places like that. We had the Kahari River. And the Kahari River was our uh, recreation department. It was our subsistence uh, department. And uh, it continued like that until I went to college back in 72 when I graduated from high school. So that was uh, that was home. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get a job and uh, work all over the country uh, working with U.S. Department of Agriculture. I got to travel quite a bit. I got to meet a lot of different people in different places. And looking at the rivers and stream beds in those areas and then coming back home and looking at our river, a place that was home for us, a place that was one of the cornerstones of the Kahiri people. Um, you know, I think every community has cornerstones. And I think in most communities, they're pretty much the same. But for the Kahiri people, our cornerstones was, of course, the house, the home, uh, the church, the school and the river. Well, the home, the church, and the school were doing fine, but our river was in a mess when I came, when I retired uh, back in 2012. And trying to just go back to the river, a place that was uh, our, our source of uh, strength and uh, subsistence and uh, getting away and enjoying life, it didn't happen. Uh, the land had been sold uh, to the government and uh, the Department of Agriculture, government, the Department of um, not ag, but uh, DEQ mm -hmm. uh, uh, has it in a, a stewardship program, which is good uh, to a point because it has wetland mitigation and you know things work. However, maintenance and care of the river didn't happen like it did when we were young. Uh, when the river would stop up, a tree would fall. We had people that would get in and clean it out. Uh, back in those days, you know, farmers they trapped. Uh, there was beavers, there was uh, rat, there was coons, uh, otters, and all, and that was great. Uh, over time, uh, trapping eliminated the beaver. I think that happened back in the 30s or 40s when beavers were eradicated. And it's my understanding that the species of beaver that we had then is different from what we have now. What we have is a subspecies that's a larger 
beaver. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were introduced, uh, of course, larger beavers eat bigger trees right. and uh, make bigger dams. And uh, in a small river that's not accustomed to that uh, that action, you know, we have uh, problems. And our system became clogged up, and it's it's that way today. So, long story short. My goal was to open that river up for a lot of reasons, and I guess we'll talk about this a little bit later mm -hmm. on, but uh, that's where I grew up, and that's where I wanted my grandchildren to grow up. Mm -hmm. I have two grandsons. Uh, there's video games, there's television, there's all kinds of things to, uh, to divert their attention from reality and from what life is supposed to be like. And uh, if we can, and I know growing up, if I can uh, keep them uh, focused on what's real in life, and it's not, uh, it's not, it's not in a machine. It's not on television, but uh, life itself. Then I'm hoping that they'll turn out a little bit like me, and uh, and uh, enjoy and try, try to protect our environment. One of the things I, I've noticed in, in looking at is some of quotes that that you've uh, done, and, and some of the interviews that you've been involved in. This is, this is a passion for you, and the ability uh, of being able to retire from one job and now step into what a job I would say is a is not so much a job, but it's personal. It's yeah. something that that you've taken on, and, uh, and 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 actually we wouldn't be here. And as I segue over to uh, to introduce Cullen, uh, Cullen, you you were kind of brought in, and now you're kind of a coordinator. Uh, for this whole process with the with the river Wh what have you learned so far because i think you've kind of taken on this job what well, back in 23 or 24 no, 19 20 or 20 yeah 2021 yeah so it's it's interesting because but you've been exposed to the river even as a young man mm -hmm. uh to some of the things that that uh you know that philip just alluded to do you see this as a job do you see it as a passion do you see it something that is a purposeful thing for for you and and your experience in life yeah so i graduated from uh college in 2017 and i'll never forget he uh, set up a day through our church uh, men's group mm -hmm. and um that's when they had just cleared the two miles from star to five bridge and uh, i got to experience it and you know i was like this long forgotten natural resources in our backyard that I didn't get to have when I was a kid. You know, I would walk the woods at my grandpa's house, but mm -hmm. as far as my experience with the river, it wasn't a pleasant one growing up. It had turned into a swamp. Um, so to see where we're at today, you know, we've cleared over 120 miles of river mm -hmm. in Sampson County. Um, but me, me specifically, it's taught me a lot of uh, good life lessons with patients and uh, community, family, um, different things like that. And I look at it as a passion. Um, I'm so blessed to be, to have the opportunity, um, to take care of our waterways and engage visitors and set up trips. And, uh, I love educating young minds. Mm -hmm. So that's a neat little thing of it. Um, so it's a really, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a profession or a Passion, right? Both. Well, well, I think I think uh, Philip, you probably agree with this. If you can ever kind of bring together your passion and your job, then you're going to have a wonderful life. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think you've kind of seen that with with what you've been doing over the past decade, really. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for me, it's uh, it's it's not about Philip Bell. It's about the community. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, uh, Greg and I, and back in 2012, we started or 20. 13 we started cleaning out the river just you know that section that i was talking about right around star telephone uh, that belonged to the state uh we had to get permission just to clean that section out that's greg jacobs greg you know. jacobs yeah. the tribal administrator yeah. we had to receive permission from uh, deq just to go in and clean a section out so we mm -hmm. can paddle and we engaged our our drum group uh young men who were young men who hadn't been exposed to the river very much and uh Getting them in there, cleaning up and uh, taking out trees. I mean, and this was hard work. We didn't have good tools. We had barred chains, hauls, some old chains and mm -hmm. just uh, hand winches to uh, leverage out the trees. Regardless, we cleaned out about three or four miles and the boys every Saturday afternoon when we finished, we'd watch those fellows, they'd paddle in the river. 
And the first year that we did the work, I remember out of about six or seven that worked, I think only one was full, you know, permanently or full-time employed. Mm -hmm. The next year, when we got the same group to come back and help us uh, start cleaning out and to clean out a little bit more, out of that same group, only one was not employed. And we saw a change in our young folks in our community in that, that small group that was there. These boys that uh, had different ones in the community who had never enjoyed the river before, uh, the, after the second year, you'd see uh, them with their own kayaks, with their children down there, uh, people down there every weekend. If you go by Star Telephone, look at the, the parking lot there now. Just about any time you go, someone is there kayaking or, or uh, fishing or enjoying that little section there. And that was a trigger there that stemmed from uh, what I guess we're going to talk about mm -hmm. this a little bit yep. later on, but that uh, that was uh, validation of what we were doing was the right thing. What we wanted for our people, Greg and I understand that what we're trying to do is a community-based effort here. It's not for Greg, it's not for Philip, it's not for Cullen, it's for our community and, uh, and for people to uh, recreate and enjoy our natural resource, one that's really good. Well, th this is to me uh, just, you know, reading about you and what you guys have done. This this keeps coming back every time. This is a legacy issue, though. This is something that through your remembrance mm -hmm. of what happened as a child and even before that. And as we talked about off camera here, uh, the, the whole 17, 1600 years, you know, that was a huge thing. So when we come back from a break we're fixing to take here in a minute, I want to kind of dip into that water a little bit and and tell us um, not only what you brought forward, but I want to ask, uh, then Cullen, I'll kind of ask you this, is what have you learned from this historical experience that it maybe, you know, Philip can look back a little bit further in history, but what have you learned and what are you able to push forward? And I think, Philip, that's where we're mm -hmm. we're both headed. So oh, yes. um, this, this is a story that can't be brought together. I'll go ahead and tell folks this. <laughs> it can't be brought together in 50 minutes. It's something that's going to require a semester. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to continue this saga. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us again. Call a friend. Stay tuned. We're talking about something possibly at your back door. It's an opportunity for you. We'll be back in one moment. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. If you run a business, you need sales. To get sales, you need customers. To get customers, you need exposure. Let our team of experts craft and produce the perfect video ad to reach your intended audience while making the most of your advertising dollars. Call 1-800-706-6538 or visit starcom.net to contact our Star Communications production team and get your business moving to the next level. Welcome back. We should know it's on there. J.W. Simmons here, your host. Thank you for being with us today. We're talking about the river. We're talking about on a hot day, or maybe a cool day, but particularly weather like we've been having recently, this idea of floating down a tranquil river, a creek, uh, a swamp, whatever you want to call it, but floating on the water under trees and the weather cools off significantly. Two people to know a lot about that is Philip Bell and Cullen Bell. Guys, thank you for coming inside today and talking about something that's happening outside that's improving people's lives. It's making a difference in how they perceive the environment. Uh, Philip, we've talked a bit about the, the historical impact. I, I don't want to leave that right at the moment. I want to kind of reflect on that one more time here and, and, and look at that. As, as you mentioned earlier, as both you and I were, were being brought up in this rural environment, we experienced a lot of stuff that people younger than Cullen um, and even Cullen's age is never going to experience unless you keep doing what you're doing. Um, how critically important is that? 10 years from now, 20 years from now? 
If you look at the influx of people coming into Sampson County now, all the housing that's going on across the communities and uh, the, the, the populations that's in the schools uh, and all, it's going to change. And if we don't uh, hold on to what we have and preserve it and make sure it's available for people to enjoy, it's, it'll be gone. It'll be, uh, it'll be just uh, something that's passed, uh, passed on. And that's, uh, for me, that's, uh, I think that's unacceptable. I think it is for, for a lot of people that uh, we don't need to allow uh, rich treasure of Sampson County to, to just fall by the wayside. Uh, thus, the, uh, the Great Cahiri River Initiative and in trying to work in a way to preserve that in uh, whatever means that we can. And we're fortunate that uh, we've got a following of people who are interested just as we are in, uh, in, in preserving their, our natural resources. Uh, I talk to community, community members a lot. You know, I see them at the store or different places and they ask, how's the river work going? Mm -hmm. uh, what, is there something that you know, we could you know, support, uh, whatever? And uh, that's, to me, that's encouraging. When you ask, when we have debris removal operations, we're about to start our third debris removal operation with uh, resources from uh, the Department of Agriculture. We're working with the county Soil and Water Conservation mm -hmm. Service who are great in uh, mapping what needs to be done and making sure that everything is done correctly. Friends of Sampson County Waterways, mm -hmm. the uh, group that handle that uh, supports uh, uh, river tours and mm -hmm. uh, community uh, outings, mm -hmm. uh, a great group. Uh, and let, do a plug for them. We need more members now. Uh, membership is getting older. And uh, just like me, I'm 70 years old, so I don't have many years to go. So we need to make, keep make sure that, that continues on because they've been great partners with uh, with us and with the county and uh, getting the work done. So all these things culminating to try to preserve what's here, what's available for us, a great treasure that Sampson County has. I know I heard Britt Jackson speak one time about the three major income um, money making parts of the of the state mm -hmm. and i remember he talked about there was uh uh the military uh one other but the last one was tourism right and uh when he talked about tourism i was thinking you know that's what we're trying to accomplish here to Absolutely. some degree and we have the military that's all around us i mean oh farming agriculture was the other uh military agriculture and tourism <laughs> And so the tourism part of it, uh, just it touched on what we're trying to showcase here. And that is opening our rivers up so people can enjoy them, so people can recreate and, uh, and see one of the treasures that we have. Colin, I, I sit here and look at you and listen to what Philip's saying. Uh, you are the person that's going to be carrying this banner forward, you and folks younger than you. Talk to us a bit about how you see that happening, because you've been very much uh, physically involved in. Uh, you've taken uh, all kinds of folks uh, down the river um, over the past few years. Tell us what your sense is, especially from your perspective and age category. You know, the river, uh, the river didn't mean what it meant to him when, I, when he was growing up. Right. Um, I have a different viewpoint on the river <laughs> absolutely. absolutely and uh i've seen it make a impact in so many different lives in our community it was almost a cultural awakening mm -hmm. um you talk about the blood memory of our ancestors mm -hmm. and we've got that little fire in us mm -hmm. i feel like and once the kind of original or the first volunteers along with uh philip and greg got it to where we could paddle it it just blew up and mm -hmm. to see where we're at now is just phenomenal. Um, the visibility that we've got from it, the opportunities, the uh, grants and funding opportunities. Um, and I've seen it, you know, to touch on the guys that were uh, the first volunteers to start, you know, they're all doing well in their lives mm -hmm. and there's some of my close friends and cousins mm -hmm. and uh, to see them grow as men and grow as people uh, I think that could be contributed to the river. Um, it's just beautiful. Um, you get down there and uh, get away from life. 
mm-hmm. get away from the cars and uh, the busy trials of the day, and uh, you can get out there and relax. From your from your perspective uh, and, and what you see going forward here, mm-hmm. and Philip alluded to this, this is this is an all hands on deck kind of thing. Uh, do you feel like there's enough energy uh, in your age group, five, mm-hmm. ten years plus or minus, that starts feeling this? Do you feel there's enough folks behind you that maybe even be younger yeah. that says, "I want to get involved in this"? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it comes down to capacity. Um, and we see more and more community members wanting to help. Um, we've got a lot of guides that we can uh, call on when we need them. Um, some of them work eight to five. Uh, but we have seen a younger group come through, uh, like his grandson. Um, one of my little cousins is interested in it. And uh, they're always asking, when can I go out on the river? When can I help you? When do you need me? So. Um, my kind of you know i've got three to five year goals five to ten year goals and passions and uh it's a economic opportunity for tribal members Mm -hmm. um and kind of what we vision is that it could be you know three to four five people's permanent Mm -hmm. job where we're having you know five trips a week and uh that's something that uh would be beautiful to see. Philip, when you think about it, what I'm trying to do here is kind of not only look at the history, but also look at the future. And do you feel comfortable uh, with where we're at? And is that door opening fast enough? Is there enough folks that you feel like as you just mentioned, you brought up the age thing, which mm-hmm. I don't like to talk about. But <laughs> <laughs> you, when we started talking about the age thing, is there enough people there? Have you planted enough seeds that this particular movement will be solid going forward in, in 10, 15, 20 years from now? Uh, I think I can answer that fairly easily in saying that when we first started the Great Cahari River Initiative back in 2015 and we applied for a grant with uh, uh, resourceful communities and um, Greg and I, we talked, we had a little session in his office and in that session we were going to be getting about $10,000. We said, hey, this is going to be great. We don't, what are we going to do with this money? Is this going to be a success? And uh, we both agreed that day that if the Lord was willing, if the Lord was in what we're doing, then it'll be a success. If he wasn't in it, I mean, if, if what we were doing was wrong, then it would fail. Uh, that was in 2015. We're at 20, what, 24 now? Yep. Uh, we've uh, received several grants. Uh, we're working in conjunction with the state or working with the state and doing mm-hmm. debris removals. Uh, we've opened enough river open to where we have a, a, a tourism component that's building now. Uh, Hubs Farm, Tammy with a uh, group. I mean, Tammy yeah, Peterson. Yeah, oh Lord, yeah. She's uh, she takes folks down there quite often, and I love to see them down there. Those girls, they have a good time. When you see these smiling faces, when you're on the river and you see these smiling faces, we know that what we're doing is the right thing. I mean, it's, it's an accomplishment not just for. Uh, the legacy that we have as Native American people in trying to enjoy our river. But uh, I tell folks that growing up, you know, when we were down in the river, there was, um, it wasn't just Indians in the river. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody in the community was there. I mean, you see people that you never thought you'd see before or anywhere else. They would be down there fishing, having a good time. And uh, you, you can't do that now. I mean, that's not available other than the sections that we've got cleaned out or that are open. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. But uh, for me, bringing this back to the community and for the uh, folks to enjoy themselves, to be in tune with nature, to get back to see what God has given us to enjoy is my goal. For Cullen, I think getting this tourism package rolling, mm-hmm. getting it so that you know it's self-sustaining to where we can make a little money enough to keep it going, is uh, is critical too. And that's what uh, I think it's a dual purpose in uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And I think it's, it can be done. I know it can be done because people love our river when they come to see us. They want to come back and. Uh, We've got tours now that, you know, if we had enough water, if the river was open enough, we could be in there going today. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, we've had going through a drought. We'll get over that. But, uh, 
you know, when water comes back in time ago, we'll we'll be busy enjoying uh, taking people down the river. A whole nother life right here under us. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and I want to talk about some of the props we see around us here. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about where we're going, get into detail of the excitement that can be happening to you today on the river in Sampson County. We'll be back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Computer viruses, malware, and ransomware are out there. They're dangerous, and they can steal your identity and damage your equipment. Star Communications is now offering Protect IQ. This service adds an extra layer of protection to every device connected to your network. Working quietly in the background, Star can help you protect yourself from the inside out with Protect IQ. Call Star today and take advantage of this free service when you sign up for whole home Wi Fi with Star Communications. How can your friend save you money? It's easy. Refer a relative, coworker, neighbor, or friend to Star Communications. Friend signs up for high-speed internet service. Friend's new account is confirmed. Friend gives your name to our service representative as the one who referred them to Star. You receive a $30 internet credit. It's just that simple. And even better, receive a $30 internet credit for every referral that results in a new confirmed account. High-speed internet from Star Communications. Refer a friend today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The name of the show is We Should Know. My name is J.W. Simmons. I'm your host. We're talking about the river today, and we're talking with two folks that know a lot about that, and that's Philip Bell and Cullen Bell. Uh, guys, I want to thank you for this uh, first couple of parts of the show. We talked a lot about the history. I want to kind of get into the things that we see around us on the set today, and uh, and that this kayak. we got paddles here. Uh, we've got a book title on the swamp. We got another book we want to talk about. So we got a lot of stuff to cover uh, in, in the next few minutes as we kind of come to a close. But at the at the end of the day, when we sit down and talk about all these things, Philip, uh, the thing is, is you have to show people. And that's where you've done a great job and Cullen, where you're doing a great job. If, if folks don't understand, if, if we can't explain it, it pictorially or in a book, uh, guess what? You can come out and experience it. Right. So let's talk about that experience. Is the canoe that we see on the stage, I keep calling it a canoe, kayak, the thing that you ride on in the water, <laughs> if, is, is, this, is this something that folks are expected to have? Is that something that you furnish? Uh, when you look at that, how much is this that people can say, well, I don't have to worry about it. I can experience if I like it, then I might maybe get me a kayak or if yeah. i really like it i might get one for my children and kind of tell us how that goes and i'll, I'll start yeah. with you on that goal uh the name of our uh business is Kahari river tours mm -hmm. um, you've got four rivers in sampson county we mostly use six runs on the eastern side and the great Kahari that runs through the uh, middle of sampson county um, but we provide the kayak the pfd uh, the paddle and all the equipment you need. All the safety gear. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, everything you need to make it a smooth day in Kahari land. Mm -hmm. um, we start at the Kahari Travel Center, where we uh, take you through our hallways, teach you the history of the school, mm -hmm. Eastern Carolina in, mm -hmm. Eastern Carolina Indian School. All right. And then we uh, have a 650-year-old dugout canoe. And we tell the story of the river took care of our ancestors, and then when we slowed down and took care of the river, that was the gift that it showed us. So you get to see that and experience it. And then we take you through our museum, arts and crafts, uh, and different beadwork, uh, mm -hmm. Native American culture. And uh, we teach you the history of the tribe. And then we take you out on the river with Kahari guides who have a deep understanding of the uh, geography the birds you see, the plants, the trees. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get that educational opportunity. And then um, we usually, uh, sometimes we'll have a, uh, some drumming and singing. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, 
It's just a very neat experience, about well, four to five hours. You, you get you get the experience not only the heritage, but you get the experience, the, the actual practical part of getting in a kayak and, and, and going down the river. You were telling me off camera that, that you uh, actually had some folks that uh, one fellow fell in the water, but yep. it, it was interesting. Tell us, tell us about that particular trip. Yeah, uh, so we had Campbell University come down, <laughs> and uh, it was a 6'5", 300-pound lineman on the football team. Mm. And uh, we make the joke, uh, before you get in, if you don't remember anything, if you fall out of our river, just stand up. <laughs> and uh, for about two to three seconds, he was you know, going crazy, and he stood up, and uh, it was about – Waist deep. <laughs> Waist deep. So um, it's a super safe uh, trip, and our guides do a good job beforehand of giving you uh, tips and techniques to um, have a better experience on our rivers. So, so Philip, what I'm hearing then is that once a person decides, well, I want to go try this, if it's with their children, or, or is there an age limit that you prefer not to have people – on board is is there a prime age of, of saying well it's it's good but kind of tell us about that uh, we like for them to be where they can wear a, a life jacket and paddle themselves unless they're going to ride with their parent i mean you know, there are uh, some i've seen on there the youngest one we had was uh was, what uh four or five yeah four well they have i've seen one smaller than that there was one lady that was pregnant so that was their yeah. earliest one really? <laughs> yeah. but anyway uh they uh if they're 10 years old or older they, they don't have you know you can turn them loose i tell people if you can pay or when you come and you paddle on the big kahiri mm -hmm. uh, especially that section from uh, star telephone to five bridges uh when you finish that you can go anywhere in north carolina and paddle and not have to worry about it uh it's a good learners uh section for for folks who's never paddled before mm -hmm. it's a good safe section because like colin said you know 90% of the area you're going to be on is not more than waist deep or shoulder deep. So it's, uh, if you fall out, you can stand up. So uh, from a tourism package and a safety point of view, it's a great section. Uh, you're not going to find many like that in North Carolina that's that, uh, that safe and can offer you those uh, uh, the scenery that's on there, especially in the fall. Uh, the springtime, we've got a weed called alligator weed. Uh, we didn't talk about that earlier, but uh, it's a huge... Uh, I figured we are going to go there. Well, <laughs> good. Uh, we can, I could go there all day, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but I won't. But uh, there, there are things that need to be done to make it a better trip. But it's a great trip. Beaver dams, we try to keep... We don't take down all the beaver dams. We're, uh, you know, if you have something that's uh, going to give you problems, work with it. And so we're working with the beaver dams and... We'll cut a place out and let the kids go through, and it's, we call it Sampson County Whitewater. Right. And so right. it's like being in the ocean. I mean, it's the, it's the next the thing to rapids. Exactly. Yeah. So it just uh, adds a little adventure to the trip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That and, and Cullen, when you when you do that, you know, typically how many people like yourself is with the group? when you go down the river, is there is you have like a minimum number you got to have before. We've taken groups as small as two, um, <laughs> but we cap it at 20 on the booking calendar online, uh, the Cary Tribes website. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the situation. We're very flexible, um, but cap it at 20 and uh, anywhere from three to four guides, just depending on you know the age and experience level of the uh, guests coming. So when, when we look at this thing, guys, so, so for example, if somebody's listening today or watching the show, they're thinking, you know, I've got grandchildren or I've, I, you know, we've been thinking about taking on a couple of days or a day and going somewhere. This is a good day trip if you live within any range of, uh, of, of this area, because the beauty is it, Sampson and surrounding counties to include Bladen, uh, is, is in the center of Southeastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So you can easily drive here for a day trip, mm -hmm. set it up. How long does it usually take for the entire journey of which you would take somebody on? So you arrive at the travel center. It's usually an hour uh, tour of the building and uh, the history. And then, you know, with the shuttle getting to the take in or put in, it's usually about a 15 minute process. And then you paddle for, you know, depending on water levels and size of group, anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours. 
So you're looking at, uh, we usually run trips around nine and then we're done at one. Um, and uh, speaking of the map, uh, you know, Sampson County is pretty much the halfway point between Raleigh and Wilmington, mm -hmm. 40. And then you've got um, the military bases all around. So right. we've got a pretty big target market. Um, but specifically the map, uh, if you look at a map of Sampson County, uh, I see a heart. Mm -hmm. And um, the main vein that runs through it is the Great Gahari. Mm -hmm. So it was a lifeblood for our people. And uh, to see what it is offering today is uh, very, very neat. And I want to touch on the Black River real quick. Sure. Um, we do offer trips down to the Three Sister Swamp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's home of the fifth oldest tree in North America, dated at 2,630 years old. Wow. It's a bald cypress tree. Um, it's not for your beginning beginner paddler. It's a nine mile trip. Mm -hmm. So uh, pack your lunch. Yeah, and, you, we're uh, talking endurance now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a not your everyday paddler's yeah. uh, paddle. Two thousand and how many years old? Two thousand six hundred and thirty years old. Wow. Yeah. So that takes care of the age issue, right? We'll, put, we'll, put, we'll put that to bed. So, yeah. and that's that is a, a historical point in North Carolina, in southeastern North Carolina, mm -hmm. that folks may not even know what yeah. you just mentioned, but it's, is that easily accessible or is there ways you can get in to actually see that that doesn't take that much that much time? I mean, I'm basically thinking here of entry points to the river. It's not easy to get to. I mean, it's a, it's a good paddle. Uh, the the property around the the, the tree itself or the green uh, is on nature conservancy property so you have to paddle a couple of hours to get there and then uh it's, you can do an hour inside the swamp itself it's only about a mile wide mm -hmm. and then you have a cup well maybe an hour and a half out of that to get to the takeout point uh the yeah it sounds like a lot of work it mm -hmm. sounds like a an arduous uh, adventure, but it's not. Mm -hmm. When you get on the river and you, you see what's there, there's always something different around every corner. And that's, uh, Black River's wider and longer, right. longer stretches. Uh, that's why our river's up a little, little bit north of here is a little bit, I tell them it's the best place you can go because around every curve, there's something different. And the curves aren't that far apart. Right. So uh, it's more almost more entertaining. It is. It's uh, a lot more entertaining. Uh, the the large cypress tree is great to see, but in the southern part of Sampson County, from let's say Ivanhoe down south, you have cypress swamps or cypress swamp uh, areas down through there in sections that are almost as pretty. Uh, you have some really high banks between uh, the uh, uh, the. Uh, boat ramp, the state boat ramp in Ivanhoe down to Beatty's Bridge. Great. I mean, it's it's one of these, it's another one of these particular places that uh, is worth the effort and the money to see. It's a kind of, I hear you saying this is like a, a pristine area that God created for your eyes and for your enjoyment. You're I, exactly right. I, I want to uh, so much try to get as, as much as we can in. We're coming up on uh, our last segment or our last part of the show here. And uh, I want to come back when we come back, talk about some literature that, that you highly recommend and where folks may pick this up and why you recommend that literature. And then we'll close it out with contact information. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking about entertainment for you right here in San <laughs> Providing fewer commutes, more backyard offices, and crystal clear meetings. Providing less, uh, you froze up. And more presence in your presentations. Providing a better internet experience. Providing possible. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. You forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more.
Welcome to Cork and Brew Roseboro, where you can enjoy your favorite coffee, craps, smoothies, bakery items, sandwiches, and select beer and wines while reconnecting with friends and family. Sit down and enjoy the experience. Come on by and give us a try. The average American household has 17 devices connected to the Internet. With more and more devices able to get online, you may need to increase your Internet speed. Call Star Communications today and let us help you select the package that's right for you. Welcome back, folks. We should know it's on there. Coming up on the last part of the show today, my name is J.W. Simmons, your host. Our guest today is Philip Bell and Cullen Bell. We're talking about the rivers in Sampson County, particularly the Great Cahari or Big Cahari, and then the tributaries to that. We've discussed a lot of stuff. This last part of the show, uh, Philip, I want to touch on some literature that's out there for folks that uh, not only do you recommend, but that you see as kind of part of the glue uh, that holds us together. And, and during break, we talked about that, although this is an initiative of the Kahari people, this is something that everybody can be involved in. Uh, so let's start with that. And you got a couple of uh, books here, mm-hmm. and, and one of them is On the Swamp, mm-hmm. and then the other one that is uh, that you alluded to uh, here, I'm gonna let you speak to both of those, particularly as it relates to children and what children are aware of. Yeah, you know, we talked earlier about, uh, you know, there are three books that I think gives or has provided that impetus to me to take this thing and run with it as far as an environmental uh, adventure for young folks. First is the Bible, of course. If we read that, we don't have to worry about anything else. Mm-hmm. Second one is uh, the book, The Last Child in the Woods, uh, was written by Richard Love. And um, so I was at a meeting one time and they were talking about young folks and uh, you know, the challenges that we have and that this book would change that. And it does. I think every teacher that teaches school should read this book and every parent that has a child should read it when the child is born because it explains the value of uh, children being exposed to the outside, even if it's in their backyard. It doesn't have to be in a river system. It can be anywhere. But the the value of them being able to experience the environment uh, as it relates to their their lives, their their upbringing and uh, their their makeup. Another book was written by Ryan Ema- or Dr. Ryan Emanuel. Uh, Dr. Emanuel is Lumbee with uh, some Kahiri heritage uh, uh, built in there. Uh, it's on the swamp and it's, uh, it's a good book about our, huh, it's hard to explain it. You'll have to read it to really get a good, uh, uh, I can't, I cannot begin to tell you the value of it when it comes to trying to understand where we are in today's world and uh, addressing environmental issues that mm-hmm. are facing us. Uh, Ryan has a deep passion for the river. He came to visit with us uh, back in 2014. Uh, he was at NC State then. Uh, he has brought in groups to do environmental monitoring in uh, the waterways to find out. People were asking me, is the water safe or the fish safe to eat in our rivers? And I couldn't answer that question. Mm-hmm. I posed that to Dr. Emanuel. He sent some folks here. They did a year long study of our water systems to see if the purity was clear enough to fish were safe to eat. and. Uh, so he's uh, he understands where native people are with the river systems and the value of our river systems. So on the swamp, if you can get that and read it, I think it'll it'll open that another window of uh, understanding where we are and what we do. I think so. That's a great challenge, especially the book Last Child in the oh, Woods. Yes. It sounds like that uh, <laughs> to you that you may just made to, to, to educators. Right. I mean, that's that's strong because oftentimes you have the the pattern. You've got the historical part in mm-hmm. education, and then you get the mathematical and the analytical stuff. But they forget the value of the core beliefs and core values that tend to hold us together. Um, Colin, I want to segue to you on that idea of of core values. Is that something that you see people kind of needing some nurturing in is those core values? Yeah. um, You know, the life we live in today is uh, me, 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 now, now, now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, since I've been on this journey, it's taught me a lot. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, I've seen growth in so many different individuals. so when you can slow down and really uh, point out what's important, mm-hmm. uh, I think that'll take you a long way. 
and uh, it's all about perspective. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that fire you've got in you to keep mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. this river open in a navigable waterway to mm-hmm. uh, always have that opportunity for the community and the Kahari tribe to uh, you know carry it on. Yeah, I can tell you a little story about Cullen. When he came to work with us, yeah, he got out of school. He's selling insurance. He was doing stuff. Yeah, he's 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 good with people. He has he's he's a good communicator. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Cullen, he got down in the river and he started. Now he's a he's a entomologist. He's a, a, a botanist. He's I don't know. He he tries to identify every plant that's down there. He wants to know every tree that the species, the genus of species yeah. of every tree. Bugs, you'll find a bug. Man, look at this bug. Yeah. And when people are paddling with color, they're out for an experience. And the same thing with Carol Jean. She's retired military. When you have a lot of kids that uh, want to get unruly, Carol, Carol Jean knows how to get those kids under mm-hmm. control mm-hmm. so that everyone's safe and secure. So we've got, the Lord has blessed us with a great dynamic when, we're, when mm-hmm. we're paddling or when we're taking groups. And even a bigger blessing when we have people that come who just want to learn from the river. So uh, it's more, it's not just a paddle on the river. It's an educational, spiritual, uh, it's a fun, it's a full package trip when you go on Kahiri Creeks with uh, with us. W- would it be safe to say that, that this is a life-changing experience? <laughs> My that, wife would tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been it has been for you guys. I don't know about going forward for everybody else, but it's it's definitely something that I I hear that passion from both of you, you guys is that, that this is something that if you get involved in and if you experience it, it it's not like you know clicking to the next channel on your tablet or whatever. You this is something that's going to be not only tangible, it affects. And I think you mentioned this earlier. Um, off camera, Colin, that, that affecting all of your five senses. Yeah, um, we always like to share with our visitors before we get out on the water. Um, I learned it from a breathwork class where you go through your five senses and deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we make the joke, you know, don't reach down and taste the water, maybe taste the air. Yeah. Um, but the other four are self explanatory, and I find myself doing it, you know couple of times throughout trips and uh we do a neat thing where at the end of the trip we ask the guests what their favorite part of the day was and uh you know one or two usually go back to that uh grounding experience yeah Um, you know you can use it for anxiety and so many different things um and we do it for the smiles and uh it's just uh so many different walks of life so many different um, you know, education levels and different things that you take out on the river and to hear their perspective at the end is uh, incredible. One of the things folks are going to want to know, so I want to try to get this in because if, if we don't answer it, then um, I'm going to get a lot of calls or we're going to get a lot of emails, is this idea of what's the cost involved? If if somebody reaches out to you guys and say says, look, I've got a, I don't know, a church group mm-hmm. or I've got a scout uh, group, I'd like to you know, and there's maybe 20 or 30 people. Yeah. Scheduling is the issue, uh, cost involvement, kind of give us an idea of, of how that goes. Yeah, so all the information that uh, you need is on the kaharitribe.org website. Okay. Um, the 50, it's $50 and that gets you all the equipment and then the tour. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a lunch option for an additional cost of uh, $15. And we usually use our local Southern style restaurant to get mm-hmm. it catered, or we'll go to the location. Um, we've got a booking calendar online. Uh, you can reach out to the tribe's phone number, mm-hmm. give us a call and ask for me or him, and we'll get your contact information and uh, schedule a trip. Is, is the idea, Philip, that uh, if, if this word gets out that we've done today, uh, maybe in the next six months or what have you, all of a sudden you're going to be looking at other Cullens out there that could help because you got so many people. I wish we did. I, I wish we had a lot more uh, involvement in it. I'd love to see people go through there every day. And um, and I would really love to take our uh, our uh, our government officials, mm-hmm. I wish they would all come and just ride with us one day to see what we're trying to accomplish here. 
and uh, and get a perspective of where we're trying to take uh, what we're doing in Sampson County. So now we're talking to the House and Senate. We could get them lined up. You ready for that that tour, Cullen? You ready for that? Exactly. We'll, we'll take Biden and Trump both to put their vote. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to go there, but I, I, I suggest it. It would not only be entertaining, but it would be educational, should I say? So, so we we put a lot of challenges out there for people to think about. Uh, one of them, you've challenged the educators, and and we're going to highlight that book. The other thing is, uh, as we come in up here, like a minute, minute and a half left, is this idea of calling, going to the website. We'll also try to put that up for folks that's, that's listening or watching today. So you'll have that number. And it just if they are not sure, if, mm -hmm. if it's somebody that is a scout leader, if it's somebody with the legislator, uh, maybe the legislature would look at that and say, this this might be good. Let's get out yeah. of Raleigh. And, you know, you're always looking a place to go that it's going to be self-contained, that you're, you can kind of... Um, should I say, get to know each other better. That's right. It's a great team building activity. Absolutely. There Self -care you go. Self-care day. There um, you go. Exactly. What, what else do, are we missing that we want to get out, Philip, uh, today uh, before we have to go to closure? Uh, we, we could talk about it for hours, but uh, just the, uh, the fact that we have a natural resource here that is really great for Sampson County that needs to be uh, recognized mm -hmm. and protected, I think is the big thing for me. Uh, uh, we have something great here that uh, I would hate to see go to waste. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cullen, about 30 seconds and we're going to go to close. Uh, so I'd like to invite you to our uh, Kahari Pow Wow. Mm -hmm. um, it's September 13th at 7 p.m. and then 14th, the Saturday, grand entry is at 12 o'clock and it usually runs till 9 to 10 p.m. Um, it's a great celebration of uh, Native American culture, uh, dancing, drumming, and it's almost a mini reunion. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a great weekend. It is. I look forward to it every year. Well, I want to thank both of you guys for being here because it, it, to me, we kind of summed it up very quickly. We've talked about faith, family, and the fortitude of human life. So we're uh, very pleased to have you back and look forward to having you again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. We look forward to seeing you every week right here. And may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.